Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Omni Viewer, and welcome to Omni at the Movies. This time around, our subject is the 2017 remake of Murder on the Orient Express. As stated in my recent episode of Non-Moving Pictures, I am a huge fan of the original 1974 adaptation of Murder on the Orient Express. Everything about that film is brilliant, and I really cannot stress this enough, if you have not seen it, correct this mistake immediately. You need to see it. Now, I am not such a stickler for the classics that I automatically write off any new remake. But Murder on the Orient Express is one of those movies where anyone attempting to remake it would have a serious uphill battle. Because the original is just that good. That being said, I always felt that if there was anyone in the world who would do this remake justice, it would be Kenneth Branagh. In fact, allow me to clarify something. When I reviewed Thor Ragnarok, I said that I personally felt the first Thor movie, which was also directed by Kenneth Branagh, was the weakest of the trilogy. Now, that does not mean I hate it. I believe all the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies are still good even at their lowest. So I don't hate Kenneth Branagh's Thor. In fact, I believe that all the stuff which drags that movie down, specifically the forced Avengers buildup, was not Kenneth Branagh's fault. That stuff was clearly the result of executive meddling. Kenneth Branagh is at his best when he's allowed to follow his vision. And he clearly had far more restraints put on him for Thor than he did for, say, any of his Shakespeare movies. And even with those restraints, Thor still had great stuff in it. So yes, I like Kenneth Branagh's stuff, and I've always believed that he stood the best shot of anyone to do this movie justice. I am pleased to report that he did. For this remake, Branagh does the smart thing by giving this movie its own distinct style. Though it has the same basic plot and same basic setting as the original, it's not just a shot-for-shot -shot remake. And without getting into any spoiler territory, the story itself makes a few significant changes which justify an alternate telling without completely derailing it as a remake. Yes, I did knowingly say that. In fact, there are certain changes added which feel like they should be a big deal, but fit naturally into the story. I speak specifically of how two of the characters are no longer Caucasian. Even if this was insisted on by the studio as some sort of diversity ploy, it's incorporated into the mystery in a way that feels appropriate. Visually, the movie is amazing. You can always count on Kenneth Branagh to give you a visually stunning film, and Orient Express is no exception. I'm especially a big fan of the train's art deco design. Now yes, there's heavy use of blue screen as opposed to the 100% natural shots from the original movie, but it really does add a nice sense of scope. The cinematography only enhances the visuals, with a lot of creative shots involving overhead and long takes traveling through the train itself. One visual choice I noticed the remake does share with the original is how one of the suspects is questioned in a shot that focuses entirely on said suspect. It's not the same one who got that treatment in the original movie, but it is there. For those of you who have seen the trailers and thought this movie was going to be some sort of action-oriented reinterpretation, don't worry, the trailers blatantly lied about this. This is not a dumbed-down, action-packed reinterpretation for a generation raised on Michael Bay's Transformers. This is a dialogue-driven mystery through and through. There are only three instances throughout the entire film that kind of teeter into action movie territory. One of them at the very beginning only lasts a couple of seconds. The second, a little over halfway through the film, is a brief chase in which someone tries to escape and that barely lasts two minutes. And the third is a tense moment that happens towards the end, which again, I won't spoil, but even that is more dialogue driven than action driven. So don't worry, Agatha Christie fans, your favorite character's integrity remains intact. Of course, something must be said of the all-star cast. Only the forward march of history will determine if this remake has the same level of star power as the 1974 original, but darn is it still a good cast either way. Every single person involved here is acting their heart out. And while some of them don't quite get the same level of attention as they did in the original, you still can really get connected to them. At the center of it all, of course, is Kenneth Branagh himself as Hercule Poirot. 
In much the same way that this remake's plot and visuals are different enough to separate it from the original, so too is Brana's interpretation of Poirot from Albert Finney's. And again, this was a wise choice. In the 1974 movie, Albert Finney's Poirot was an aloof character. We know he has all sorts of eccentricities, whether he's solving a mystery or not, but we don't necessarily get any insights into his mind. As such, we don't always know what exactly he's doing until we see the result. Brana's take on Poirot is equally eccentric, but the audience is allowed in on a few more personal moments. We get to see him in private moments of doubt and wishing to be left alone. We get to understand how he sees the world. We get hints of the past events which made him the person he is in the film. This version of Poirot is certainly not an open book, but he's just a bit more personable than Albert Finney's version. It's a slightly different interpretation, but it's still recognizably Hercule Poirot. So long story short, this is a good movie. It doesn't surpass the original, and it doesn't replace it, but it sits comfortably alongside it. And if a sequel is ever greenlit, I will be there on opening day. And as always, I shall end this by opening the floor to you guys and asking what you thought. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments section below, but let's try not to get too spoilery, okay? Spoiling a mystery is kind of a sucky thing to do. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer, signing off.